What colour eyes and hair did the Vikings have? What haploid groups were common amongst them? And what was their genetic makeup? Also, we know that the Vikings had the genetic influence in different parts of the world they raided and settled in, such as Britain and Ireland. But what impact did foreign genetics have on Scandinavia itself during the Viking Age? I will answer these and many other questions in this video. Now as a very quick overview, the Viking Age roughly ran from the 8th to the 11th century AD. Although we often refer to the Vikings today like they were some unified cohesive empire, the term Viking itself implies as much the action of raiding by sea rather than a fully unified group. But we do know that many people, mainly men, did set out from Scandinavia in search of fortune, land, women, and whatever else may have drove them, and they are collectively known as the Vikings. As an interesting point to note, some have argued that the phenomenon of the Vikings was created due to an imbalance in the operational sex ratio in Scandinavia itself during the Viking Age, which is the ratio of males to females in a society who are ready to mate at a given time. This imbalance created a pool of unmarried men who were willing to engage in this risky business of going Viking for wealth, status and to attract a mate, according to one argument at least. Regardless of the precise reasons, these people from modern Norway, Sweden and Denmark went out to raid and explore most of Western Eurasia, as well as the likes of Greenland and North America, sometimes settling in these foreign lands, established in the Danelaw period in the land we call England today for instance. Now before we move on to look at Viking eye colour, let's quickly look to see if the genetics of Scandinavia itself changed during the Viking Age. Well, a really interesting study was published in Nature in 2020 that looked at the population genomics of the Viking world. And they found that substantial ancestry from elsewhere in Europe entered Scandinavia itself during the Viking Age. To be more specific, one major finding was that ancestry from Britain and Ireland entered Western and Scandinavia during this period, whereas ancestry from Finnish and Baltic sources entered modern Sweden. This study also observed an amount of South European ancestry entering Denmark and Southwest Sweden during this time, modelled from Italy in particular. This is pretty interesting, as Southern Europe is obviously much further away from Scandinavia than Britain, Ireland and the Baltic states. But why was this? Why did the genetics of Scandinavia change? Well, one of the main reasons for this probably relates to the Vikings taking slaves back to Scandinavia, and also marrying and having families with foreigners, many of which probably were slaves, at least initially at least. According to one estimate, slaves might have comprised as much as 10% of the population of Viking Age Scandinavia. Another study published in Cell in 2023 found some tentative evidence that gene flow into Scandinavia of Eastern Baltic ancestry and to a lesser extent also British Irish ancestry was female biased, which would make sense if the mostly male Vikings brought women back home. In general, the Nature Study found that levels of non-Scandinavian ancestry in the Danish, Norwegian and Swedish Vikings agree with known trading routes, which makes sense logically that the genetic patterns of the Viking Age tend to follow the trading patterns. But what about eye colour? What colour eyes did Vikings mainly have? In Scandinavia today, obviously lighter eyes are pretty common amongst the population, blue, grey and green, with one figure estimating that around 78% of the population of Sweden today have blue eyes. So was this the same for Vikings? Now I should note before we get into the details that the nature study did note that there's no such thing as a, a sort of Viking phenotype as such, given the fluid nature of the Vikings, obviously it's not a unified empire or, or country as such, so it is slightly loose from, from that perspective. And there was some variation in the eye colour of the Vikings and also hair colour of the Vikings. For example, one Viking sample from the nature study from Skara in Sweden had alleles associated with brown eyes and darker hair coloration, while another sample from Greenland likely had blue eyes and lighter hair. Overall though, when looking at the genetic markers associated with eye and hair colour pigmentation, the results indicated that their frequencies are very similar to those of present day Scandinavians. Thus, the Vikings would have had blue, green and grey eyes and relatively similar levels to modern Scandinavians, and therefore it would have been pretty common for a Viking to have lighter eyes. To expand on this, the supplementary information of the nature study goes into more detail. As the authors write, the SMPs with strongest association with lighter hair and eye pigmentation phenotypes, such as the ones in HER-C2, OCA2 and TYR genes in humans, are elevated in the Viking population. 
and the profile of allele frequency distribution is close to the present day Northern European population, represented here by the 1000 Genomes Project and the modern Danish population. This suggests that the genetic profile of pigmentation SMPs we observe in Northern Europeans today had largely been formed at the onset of the Viking period. This might not be fully the case for Denmark, however. When the study compared the Viking Age samples to modern day Scandinavian populations for different traits, they observed a significant difference between the Viking Age samples and the current Danish population samples for three traits black hair colour, standing height, and schizophrenia, with the Viking Age samples having a higher rate of all three compared to today. Now, the higher rates of standing height and schizophrenia do not hold up when the numbers of tests were accounted for, but black hair did. Thus, it seems that the Viking Age Danish population probably had higher rates of black hair compared to today, which is quite interesting. Why is this? Uh, well, it's difficult to say, but it could be an influence of the South European ancestry, perhaps. I know Denmark served as somewhat of a, a trading hub to a large degree, probably just geographically, because it's further south than uh, obviously Norway and Sweden. And the study notes there's quite a lot of genetic diversity in Denmark in general, because it may have served as a, a bit of a kind of crossroads for, for many peoples. But potentially the influence of South European ancestry, but I would like to hear your thoughts in the comments below on why black hair seemed to be a bit more common in Viking Age populations in Denmark compared to modern Danish populations. Another really interesting point to note relates to Viking eye colour and how they potentially could have spread lighter eyes to different parts of the world. Parts of the world you wouldn't necessarily associate with lighter eyes, such as the Middle East and Central Asia. As I noted in my last video on grey eyes, this eye colour is found in relatively high levels in the Middle East compared to other parts of the world that is, which is somewhat surprising given how sensitive grey eyes usually are to light, which is probably related to the fact that they probably have little to no melanin in the front layers of the iris, and obviously the Middle East is a very warm climate. A really interesting comment in my last video on grey eyes pointed out a really interesting theory, so thank you to Jim Ferry for commenting. He wrote that one explanation for grey, blue and green eyes in the Middle East I heard just the other day on a podcast was that Vikings would capture women from Northern Europe to be traded in the Middle East to be used in harems etc. Not sure how accurate this is but it's one theory I've heard. Now I have been reading a wee bit into the Viking slave trade in general and this definitely is a plausible explanation. The Vikings obviously had quite an extensive slave trading network and this slave trading network wasn't just centred around the kind of North Atlantic zone. Obviously using the canal system and using kind of river systems, the Vikings explored vast territories going into Russia, Turkey etc. And they would often sell slaves to markets across Eurasia including in the Middle East and Central Asia. One power base that they traded with was the Abbasid Caliphate, whose capital was in Baghdad in modern Iraq, supplying the slave market of the Muslim world with European slaves in exchange for Arab silver. Now there is probably other factors going on here, and whether the slave trade would have had a, a large enough effect to still show up in modern day populations is perhaps debated, but an interesting theory nonetheless, and an interesting connection nonetheless, they may partly explain why grey eyes show up in the, part, in the likes of the Middle East and, and Central Asia etc. Now quickly before moving on to look at the genetic history of the Vikings and their haplogroups, this study found that modern day Scandinavian populations are still quite well structured according to the ancient Viking population groups. To be more specific, the component the study marked as Norwegian-like ancestry is present at 45-65% to in present day Norway. The ancient Swedish-like ancestry is present at 15-30% to within Sweden, and Danish-like ancestry is now high across the whole region, and this last point speaks to another finding of this study. That within Scandinavia itself during the Viking Age, the main population movement was northwards, i.e. Danish Vikings moving north into modern Norway and Sweden. In general, the Nature Study found that at least initially anyway, the Vikings formed into three main genetic clusters that correspond pretty well to modern Norway, Denmark and Sweden. As far as Viking haplogroups, one of the most common Y-DNA haplogroups amongst the Vikings was I1, also known as IM253. This is still a common haplogroup amongst Scandinavian men today and people of Scandinavian descent in general, and it is also found across Northern Europe. It is particularly common in some parts of Sweden and Finland today at above 50%, with this table showing a general breakdown per country, and it's associated with the spread of Germanic peoples in general. Other paternal haplogroups found among Scandinavian men of the Viking Age include R1b and R1a, in particular the R1a Z284 subclass. 
effects. On the maternal side, a 2015 study looked at the mitochondrial DNA variation in the Viking Age population of Norway by analysing the DNA of 80 ancient individuals. They found that the ancient Norwegians were genetically similar to previously analysed ancient Icelanders. And to present day Shetland and Orkney Islanders, Norwegians, Swedes, Scots, English, German, and French. The Viking Age population had higher frequencies of K, U, V, and I haplogroups than their modern counterparts, but a lower proportion of T and H haplogroups. Three individuals carried haplotypes that are rare in Norway today U5B1B1, A, and an uncommon variant of H. Our combined analyses indicate that Norse women were important agents in the overseas expansion and settlement of the Vikings, and that women from the Orkneys and Western Isles contributed to the colonisation of Iceland. So this is a pretty interesting finding. For earlier context as well, the study from Nature that modelled the population genomics of the Viking world found that there was three main sources that went into the earlier genetic history of the Vikings. Mesolithic hunter-gatherers, Neolithic farmers, and Bronze Age pastoralists. During the Viking Age, they also found some other interesting genetic connections on top of what we have already covered. These included two ancient individuals originating from northern regions of Norway who had genetic affinities to present-day Sami people, whose territory stretches across parts of modern Norway, Sweden, Finland, and Russia. So as we've seen, there was a fair amount of gene flow into Scandinavia during the Viking Age, and in general, the Vikings, a good amount of Vikings, probably had blue eyes and lighter eyes in general. But what is the origin and reason for blue eyes? To find out, please click here. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and hit the bell, and tell your friends and family about this channel, and I'll see you next time.